breaking down the DJ Moore trade one week later. Today I will go into detail on why this trade was historic for the Chicago Bears and how Ryan Poles put all of the pressure on the Carolina Panthers. Let's get into it. There has been a lot of talk over the last week that the Chicago Bears have been front page news in the sports world. After taking the number one overall pick and making a huge splash, Poles has also been busy in free agency. I couldn't be happier with the approach and the moves that Ryan Poles has made. I'm always an optimist who tries to look on the bright side, but I'm far from a homer. I never felt this way about Phil Emery or Ryan Pace or even Jerry Angelo. For the first time in my life, we have a GM that's doing things the right way. I wanted to dive a little deeper into the trade of the number one pick. I don't think most fans understand just how monumental this trade was and what kind of pressure it put on the Panthers. National media was pushing stupid narratives like QB rookie windows and polls didn't draft filled so he wants his guy. The NFL is a business and while those situations have happened in the NFL, the Chicago Bears are in a very different position. Drafting a quarterback in the NFL is a huge risk. You have to get it right. When you trade up to get a quarterback, it's even more imperative to nail the pick. I remember after Poles spoke at the Combine, I was so excited about a potential trade package and I knew that he could pull it off, but I was scared. Any team that gave up that much to move up for a QB is taking a huge monumental risk and I was worried that teams might back out. Just look throughout history. When teams trade up and give up huge packages to move up and take a quarterback, it usually doesn't work out. The fact that Zach Wilson, Baker Mayfield, Mitch Trubisky, Marcus Mariota, and Jamarcus Russell all went top three show you that GMs don't quite have the quarterback position figured out yet. And then you think that out of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Justin Fields and Lamar Jackson, none of them went in the top three of an NFL draft. So historically, teams have done better when they wait or make a move on a QB that's falling down the draft board. Unless there's a sure thing like Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, or Joe Burrow staring at you, then it's usually better to not mortgage the future to trade up. The problem is teams usually don't trade away that pick, especially when there is a can't-miss prospect. So the Bears offered a rare opportunity for teams looking to make a splash. Throughout history, the teams that made the huge moves to come up in the draft have ended up being for Jared Goff, Trey Lance, Marcus Mariota, and others. So to me, it's usually not worth it to give up a ton of picks to move up for a quarterback. To give up a ton of picks and a legitimate number one wide receiver, that's even more risky. I understand why some teams didn't want to meet Ryan Pohl's demands but Poles was able to get the deal done, and it's a franchise-altering deal. Think about it from other teams' perspective. If you give up two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and a 25-year-old Pro Bowl caliber wideout to just move up eight spots and take a quarterback, if he doesn't end up being really, really good in your franchise quarterback, you set your franchise back for potentially a decade or longer. Poles took the pressure off of himself and the Chicago Bears this offseason, giving the team additional ammunition for the future while also collecting more assets for this season. What Ryan Poles did was masterclass. When I initially heard what the asking price was, I knew Poles had to make this deal. I made multiple videos about why I thought the Panthers made the most sense when it comes to trading up. Meanwhile, all these guys with sources kept suggesting it was the Texans or Colts. The Panthers deal made too much sense. I knew it and so did Ryan Poles. It's why he was able to get DJ Moore in this deal. Ryan Poles is very well spoken and has been very honest when he speaks to the media. I know some of the Chicago reporters like to twist his words and take him out of context but he's been refreshingly honest. Starting all the way back to a year ago from the opening press conference to him telling the story of breaking the news to Larry Ogunjobi face to face and how emotional it was. Fast forward a year and at the NFL Combine, he was telling us the price he would get for the number one pick in a trade down scenario. 
He took some heat for this. I read fans and media guys saying he was rushing or showing his cards. Ryan Poles again was playing chess while others were playing checkers. I'm still kind of amazed that he was able to acquire DJ Moore. It puts so much pressure on the Panthers to nail this pick and then also replace DJ Moore. The guy's a certified number one receiving option in the NFL, and he's been the leader of the Panthers receiving group since he was drafted. He brings an instant upgrade to the Bears receiving room, and he's better than any receiver in the upcoming draft. For people who wanted to take a wide receiver in the first round, Poles acquired a 24-year-old stud wideout who, if he was in this draft today, would easily be the first receiver selected. And he still has our first round pick, an extra second rounder, and a future first and second round pick from the deal. Ryan Poles made out like a bandit. He added so much more flexibility and filled one of the Bears' biggest needs, landing a wide receiver number one to help Justin Fields develop and this offense take a big step forward. On top of that, he added a ton of flexibility in the future. Two first round picks in 2024, two seconds in 2025, and he hasn't traded away any future picks. This team and Ryan Poles in general have an extremely bright future and tons of flexibility going forward. It was just such a huge, huge move by Ryan Poles. Meanwhile, the Panthers paid a heavy price to move up to number one in a year where there's no clear cut number one quarterback. That's scary no matter how you look at it. Teams just miss on quarterbacks way too often, especially when there aren't clear-cut guys. If the Panthers miss on this pick, they set the franchise back and would receive an F in this trade. If they find a franchise quarterback and he's around for the next decade or longer, then it's a rare win-win scenario in the NFL. Unlike Ryan Poles, though, they have to nail the pick. Poles doesn't have to nail his pick at number 9. He already made this team a lot better before even making a pick. Plus, he has four very valuable picks from this trade. If he just hits on two of them, this is an A++ trade and franchise-altering move for the Bears. Imagine if he nails three out of the four picks, or even all four. He could even trade down again and acquire more assets. DJ Moore is a sure thing, though and it instantly makes this offense better and gives Justin Field the best receiver he's ever worked with in the NFL and the best receiving core he's had, paired with Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, and Valus Jones Jr. We still have a lot of offseason left, though, but as it currently stands, the Bears easily have the best wide receiver trio in the entire NFC North. The Vikings have the best receiver in Justin Jefferson, but after releasing Adam Thielen, they have K.J. Osborne as the next best option. D.J. Moore is then the next best receiver in the North, followed by Amon Ross St. Brown. The Lions also have up-and-comer Jamison Williams, giving them a nice duo. The Packers have Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. All three of those teams could add a receiver this offseason, but currently the Bears receiver trio of D.J. Moore, Darnell Mooney, and Chase Claypool is easily the best group in the division. It's hard to imagine this a year ago when we entered the season with Darnell Mooney, ESB, and Byron Pringle as our top options. In one year, Ryan Poles has completely rebuilt this wide receiver room. He's done the same thing to the defensive backs and linebackers as well. Give him time to fix the trenches. Offensive and defensive lines are next. Ryan Poles is doing a masterful job he also understands that to build long-term success, it takes time. You build the right way, and you don't massively overpay for average production and free agency. So far, Poles is doing an incredible job, in my opinion. I've gotten some comments recently that I give Poles too much credit. I think it's important for fans to realize that I just respect what Ryan Poles is doing, and I understand that he knows more about football than I do. I respect and admire Ryan Poles. I think for the first time in my lifetime, Chicago got the right general manager to turn this team around. It's fine if you disagree, but stop blaming Ryan Poles for past GM's mistakes. At least give him a chance to write his own story. I'm not always right. 
I expected Ryan Poles to go after a right tackle first in free agency. He still hasn't added a right tackle, but that doesn't mean he's doing things the wrong way. There are a ton of factors that fans don't see, especially in free agency. There are a lot of outside factors besides if the player just fits a need and if the team has enough money. You also have to consider, is the guy a good locker room fit? Will he buy into the hits philosophy? Does he want to be a Chicago Bear? Does he buy into Ryan Pohl's vision? Is Chicago a city he wants to live in? These are all real questions that only Ryan Poles and the players know the real answers to. I believe he's at least earned the benefit of the doubt from fans. We wouldn't have all of these extra picks or DJ Moore without the help of Lovey Smith, but Ryan Poles is the guy who got the job done. Another GM could have easily mishandled this situation, but Poles was able to work his magic. He improved the Bears roster immediately and gave them extra draft capital for the next three years to increase the flexibility going forward. Meanwhile, the Panthers put themselves in a tough position. They are going to be selecting a new franchise quarterback after trading away their star receiver. They not only have to nail the pick, but they have to get creative in adding talent around the quarterback. All of the pressure is on Carolina. Ryan Poles pulled off what I consider to be the best trade in Bears history. The draft picks are amazing, but if you don't know how good DJ Moore is yet, you will find out soon. Stay tuned, guys. I'm sure Ryan Poles isn't done yet. I will be getting some All-22 videos out over the next week or so. And then as free agency slows down, I'm going to turn my attention to the draft. We are just about five weeks away from the NFL draft and currently have 10 picks. I'm going to have a ton of coverage on the NFL draft. Stay tuned, guys. Please remember to hit that like button for me. And until next time, bear down.